Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So today I decided just to do a bit of an update video, just to look around the shop and how it's all going. Um, we're pretty flat out at the moment, uh, shop's pretty busy. Um, yeah, we've kind of been a little bit understaffed for the last month or so. Our detailer decided to move on, so detailer slash polisher, so that's basically losing a painter. Um, Cause he used to do all our polishing, so we've been busy out the back there doing polishing. And then Moses also, our old apprentice, he ended up moving on once he turned tradesman. Um, so we've kind of uh, been through a couple of guys, or one guy, like we had like a trainee guy, a young guy come in. Um, he didn't make it as a apprentice. And um, yeah, we've actually got Alan Jones in, but he's gone and broken his uh, shoulder. He's been here for like a week or something. So he, he ended up breaking his shoulder and um, he was off today, unfortunately. But yeah, I just had spared 10 minutes this afternoon, so I thought I'd make an update. I've had a few people ask about it, and yeah, just people say they'd like to see, you know, a shop update. I haven't even done like a, a shop update since I actually started working here. Um, we well, started back here anyway. So I also had a few people asking about my um, trolley setup. Like, that's a working trolley, like. <laughs> It's messy, it's a little bit messy, but it's getting used. I literally sometimes just don't have time to spend 10 minutes on it and have a clean up. But this is what I ended up um, adding to it recently. Um, that's probably about six months ago now, but just a little El Cheapo um, vacuum cleaner. Looks not the best, it clogs up fairly quickly. Um, but hey, it does the job. For $65, you can't complain. I just got a couple of cable ties there and there was a couple of old hoses the ho the original hose off this only actually comes up to here but there was a couple of other vacuum cleaners from over the years that didn't get used and i just put the hoses aside to to make myself so i've got like a nice long hose on it so i can just have my trolley set up say i'm working on this car i can just have the trolley set here and i can reach down the entire side and i don't have to muck around moving it around so yeah it works quite well i've got this um lancer this one's going tomorrow so I just had to do a little bit more primer the line i wasn't quite happy with the line around there so i gave it a bit of a block black block back and um i'm gonna have to come in probably 6 30 again i started at 6 30 today it's around 4 30 now um and yeah i'll come in early and get this one smashed out that one's going tomorrow range rover evoke both of these two range rover evokes are going this subaru is going and yeah just a few other jobs that are already painted so um, busy day as always. Yeah, we've got like I said, didn't even have time to prime up some of these cars, you know, just as I said, we're, um, Alan Jones wasn't here today because of his shoulder and one of our other painters wasn't here too. So it was just uh, the two of us painters. There's usually four of us here in the paint shop. This is a job I um, finished painting not too long ago. I'll give you a look in the booth. Um, just a Nissan Dualis, nothing special, just a Average everyday refinishing job, you know, um, just tailgate on this one. No blends on the quarters. I chopped the color straight off. The color was pretty good. It was actually a reasonable size repair. Like half of that tailgate was all repaired and I tried to get them to take it off, but they said it was gonna be like, had to pull out the inner trims, like on the, the roof uh, lining and all that stuff. So um, I just had to do what I could under here, but that looks okay. Um, and then just yeah, back panel, obviously rear bumper bar and a garnish um the other painter painted a three-stage pearl crv in the other booth i won't turn the lights on in there the booth takes like five minutes to, to warm up it's got some purge system on it um yeah apart from that like it's this is it like not not a great deal of changes around here um it, like we're usually always busy which is a good thing like it it keeps your uh keeps you occupied you know it keeps you off the streets as my grandpa used to say um yeah i've got some primer guns on the way oh well i've got some primer guns here and i've got i've already put a couple of um couple of reviews up on youtube that i'm sure you guys have already seen so i reviewed this flg recently flg5 with a 1.8 on it and that gun's really good i'm really happy with that and i've got another gpi in 1.8 so the plan is to do like a top 10 primer gun review so so yeah, I'll, I'll review all the guns that I haven't already reviewed in their standalone reviews, and then we'll do like a top 10 shootout. So another one that I've reviewed recently is the uh, Starter Jet 100B FRP, which is a killer primer gun. Um, apart from that, nothing like, oh, I've got so many things that I want to do, but it's just about time. Like, 
Um, as I said, we started at six thirty today, and like it's you know, after four thirty now. By the time I get home, I'm just like, <laughs> so I do do apologise to some people. Like I get lots of comments on my videos and these days, so I just don't have time to answer them. You know, um, <clears throat> it's just how it is. I'm sure most people understand it. Like at the end of the day, you don't, um, you know, there's no guarantee you're ever going to get a reply on a YouTube channel. But in the first couple of years of um, doing YouTube I replied to every single comment man and it just got to the point it's like too much like enough is enough like it was just wearing me down like it took like an hour I'd get home and I'd spend an hour replying to comments I'll flick this compressor off awesome compressor these things they keep keep the air pressure up really nice you just got to be careful when you're shutting them down shut them down properly Oh, have a look at this. This is something that I'm not really proud of, and it doesn't. It honestly doesn't happen that often. But this color on this um, Honda Accord here, like I painted a rear bumper off this. I spent an hour trying to color match this color, and outside in the like direct sunlight, it looks perfect. But then you drive it in different angles, and it's totally screwed. Like, yeah, In some angles. Like I don't know if it, what it's like on camera might not show up but there's like one or two angles here and it's like oh yeah that's perfect but then you get it in the right angle it's like well it goes like real silver and milky and, and it goes dark so hey this is spray painting at the end of the day nobody's perfect we all make mistakes and and you know what i got to run in a, a boot lid this morning as well like um even one of the the apprentices the panel beater apprentices is like man i don't usually see you get this is probably like the worst run i've ever seen you get but um, it's starting to cool down a little bit, like not big, big time, like afternoons are, and daytimes are pretty hot still, but um, yeah, it's starting to get a little bit chilly in the mornings and you know how it is, like it, it happens to me every year, like at the start of winter you'll get a couple of big runs and you're like, okay, I've got to start to adjust my uh, painting methods again, um, just wind the fluid in on something or just take it a bit easier, I just don't put it on so heavy. Um, yeah, so new door on this Range Rover Revoke and a little bit of a repair there. That one will go out tomorrow. This one's got, yeah, just a bit of a repair there and there. This one here is the three-stage Pearl Subaru Outback. It's gonna, I don't know what was there, whether or not it was rust or what. Honestly, couldn't tell you. Um, I just paint them. <laughs> uh, at the end of that, doesn't really matter what badges on the car and you know, we just match the colour, make the colour look the same and get them looking shiny again. So look, I think that's about it for this video there guys. Like, as I said, you know, we've got a few parts that didn't even get primed. Usually, like rule of thumb, everything has to get primed at the end of the day. Like, um, but make an excuse today because uh, I'm knackered and I want to go home. So, um, yeah, like as you say, like, as I say, it's, it's a bit messy sometimes, but you know, this is all going to, this is all sort of useful. Okay, I should be putting that primer back, but, um, that paint still needs to be, uh, need to use it on certain jobs, you know, so I put a lid on it and try to keep it as neat as possible, but hey, it's, uh, it is what it is. This is, it's just work, you know. One thing I actually wanted to make a mention to is, um, when I, before I started making this video, I was going to take my respirator off, but I thought, hey, if I've got it around my neck, it'll remind me to make a mention to people to use their PPE where possible. Most of the day, uh, at least when I'm in the workshop, I'll, I'll just have this thing around my neck. Um, if I see anyone doing a bit of primer work in the shop, I'll just, just flick it on. So you're not breathing the crap in. If, if anyone's sanding without a, um, without a vacuum cleaner, I'll just flick it on. A lot of the time when I'm doing prep work, I'll just be wearing it the entire time. Um, even doing spray outs, you know, like this is where we do our colour cards sometimes, like we do have a fan there, but sometimes a little bit of it comes back just wear that respirator, you know, wear gloves when, uh, when necessary um, and yeah, just at the end of the day, we're here to make money, we're not here to um, put ourselves into a grave early you know, um, I don't want to go and take 20 years off the end of my life just because I decided to be a spray painter um, but yeah just uh, that's about it for this video a bit of a rambling video and an update video people have recommended I hope you did enjoy watching it and until next time get out there and paint some shit coming out